Alrighty, folks, what's going on, everyone? It's your boy here, the Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah here with you. So this is my second video of the day here, and um, we're going to talk about some WWE backlash. Um, of course, WWE backlash um, happened this past weekend, which I thought was a very good show. I mean, I'm going to give it like 8.5 out of 10, and man, oh man, so... You know, there was like five matches on the card. I mean, we had Tangelo in debuting. Um, he is the newest member of the Bloodline. Well, Solo Sequoia's Bloodline, whichever you want to call it. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, there was other matches too. Like Damian Priest defeating Jay Uso. We all knew that was going to happen. So, where does WWE go next? Because, remember... Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, WWE is going to have the king and the queen of the ring that's going to be in Saudi Arabia. I, I don't know if I'm going to do that um, live stream because, you know, we're doing a lot of live streams, you know, uh, because the Bruins and the Celtics and all. And by the way, we are going to be doing a live stream tonight, game one between uh, the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers. So hop on in. But nevertheless, um, let's get in and talk about What's going to happen? So, uh, one of the first matches um, that I want to talk about was uh, Jay Cogill and Bianca Belair. Of course, now they're the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Um, we all know Jay Cogill being in a tag team with Bianca Belair. Um, that was a move that Triple H wanted to do. And it's kind of a way for Jay Cogill to learn the WWE uh, culture when it comes to in-ring work, um, because we know that she's not ready for a singles bout yet, and, and if you look at that match, that match with, you know, she looked lost during that match, there were some spots there, uh, that she did look lost, and it, it didn't wreck the match, but with Bianca Belair and Jay Cogill winning this match, you know that they're going to hold the Women's Tag Team Championships for a while. Or at least until WWE decides, you know what? We're going to put Jay Cogill as a singles wrestler. And we're going to have her feud with Bianca. You know that's going to come in the future. And I'm predicting that right now. So, you know, just breathe easy. I know Jay Cogill, she's still green as grass um, when it comes to her in-ring work for the WWE. But just enjoy um, what she's doing as a tag team um, with Bianca. So, you know, you're going to be seeing a Jay Cogill on Monday Night Raw. You could see her on NXT. Yes, I understand they're SmackDown stars. But remember, that WWE Women's Tag Team Championship, that's defended on any brand. So, the importance of that is going to depend on just how loyal... Triple H's creative writers are doing with their own draft. Which, by the way, those rosters lock tonight uh, for WWE Raw. So, uh, that's the one thing that I'm looking at. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about when it comes to uh, this pay-per-view. Um, because I'll talk a lot about the bloodline. And what's going to happen with this. So, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, they did everything in their power to... Uh, win that, try to win that match against Solo Sequoia and Tamatonga. We already know what happened. We'll talk about that throughout the video. But I like this Team RKO. I really hope that WWE gives them the SmackDown Tag Team Championships because we know that, you know, a town down on the holds the gold. But you also got the Street Profits. The Street Profits are going to be contenders for those titles. But here's the thing about the Street Profits. They're struggling to convince me. And there's not too many other babyface tag teams on Friday night. I know DIY's there. I get it. But when you got Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Going up against Montez Ford and Angela Dawkins. I mean, it did prove something else. And 
those guys, uh, and Darian Grayson Waller, they need the right opponents to work with. Or, you know, their WWE tag team title reign, it's going to stink up the joint. And that's why I kind of feel like Kevin Owens and Randy Orton did the perfect match there. And what you can do with that and what can make it very interesting is if you want to continue this feud with the bloodline, because by the looks of it right now, it looks like you're going to have a Tamatanga and Tangaloa as a tag team. They're going to be just like what the Usos were when it came to Roman's bloodline. We all remember that. But what's not like to like about that? Um, RKO going up against those guys, G.O.D., hell yeah. I would love to see that, especially for the tag titles. Come on. Because Backlash showed us how well that RKO can work, especially in those brawls. And if you have a brawl with G.O.D., oh, hell yeah. It's going to make WWE very interesting. Um, when it comes to blow-off feuds, and I'd like to talk about Hell in a Cell. Now, Hell in a Cell, we know, is not a premium live event anymore. It's a gimmick match. AJ Styles and LA Knight still got some beef. And if you don't do that match, Hell in a Cell, I know I saw this poster today. Drew McIntyre and CM Punk at SummerSlam inside Hell in a Cell. Okay, I, I like that idea. But if you don't do Hell in a Cell, you can have some kind of stipulation bout. I mean, the lads that we saw in France, they were, they were supporting AJ Styles. You know, they were chanting for AJ Styles. But when you look at AJ Styles and LA Knight, they got to win a piece. But I kind of feel like AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes is going to continue. And that feels going to continue into uh, King and Queen of the Ring. So WWE, what they're trying to do over here is WWE is going to power through France and Backlash. And I think what you're going to do is have LA Knight enter the King of the Ring. But the way that I see it, if you're going to do AJ and LA Knight, you got Clash at the Castle, and you got the money in the bank. So you can do one of those matches. Like I said, Hell in a Cell until SummerSlam. If I were to do Hell in a Cell at SummerSlam, it has to be McIntyre and Punk. But obviously, you have to keep Styles and L.A. Knight a pop. For now. Let A.J. have his beef with Cody. And then you can have that grudge match. But one thing's for sure. There's unfinished business between those two guys. And speaking about um, uh, the king and the queen of the ring. I'm going to give you my favorite. On who I think is going to win the queen, of the, uh, the queen of the ring. It has to be Tiffany Stratton. She's my favorite to win that tournament in Saudi Arabia. And the way that she's going to do it is when she wins that tournament, she's going to challenge Bailey for the women's title. And I would do that at Clash at the Castle. And what's so nifty about Tiffany Shotton is that she doesn't necessarily even need to win her first one-on-one -on -one Versus a champion. I would have Tiffany Stratton. Take Billy. Bailey. Not Billy. But Bailey. To the limit. And come up short in the first match. At Clash at the Castle. Learn from the defeat after that. Come back stronger next time. Because. Everyone. Has to lose major matches. At some point in their career. Tiffany Stratton's no different. She's not Goldberg, okay? She's not going to go on this 
undefeated streak like Goldberg did. But if Tiffany Stratton does become the queen of the ring, WWE 100% should have her do something big. Now, I'm going to say this about queen and king of the ring. And this is my personal suggestion over here. Do not make it campy comedy goofy nonsense like what they did with Selena Vega and what they did with Baron Corbin. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm done with that shit. Because what we saw in McMahon's era, those flopped. And I'll tell you this right now. For Tiffany Stratton, Tiffany Stratton's got to beat Bailey at some point. And there's a certain wrestler who is the original queen of the ring. Never won the tournament, but we, you know who she is. And last time I checked, she was pretty damn good. Charlotte Flair. This is perfect for Charlotte Flair when she comes back. A few with her and Tiffany Stratton, sign me up for that. That's going to make things very spicy in the women's division. Now, when it comes to the King of the Ring, it's got to be Gunther who wins the King of the Ring. Because WWE, we all know what they did. They moved Giovanni Vinci to SmackDown in the draft. And Gunther, he's still hoping that Luther Kaiser can become a liable guy in, in Imperium. And how do you have that happen? Luther Kaiser has to help Gunther become king. We have to see a king Gunther. Because I expect the winner of this tournament, they're going to go for a world championship at some point. Gunther... And, I, like, we don't know anything about The Rock if he's going to be at SummerSlam. I can see Gunta challenging Cody Rhodes for the WWE title. I would put that as a main event for SummerSlam. And people will talk about that because, remember, Gunta still has some unfinished business with Cody Rhodes. Y'all remember last year at the Royal Rumble? Who was the guy that eliminated Gunta after Gunta broke the record. It was Cody Rhodes. So you could use that. As a storyline. And like with Tiffany Stratton. What WWE. What you should avoid. Is turning Gunta into a campy. Comedy. King. I don't want to see that. And no. And another thing too. I do not want to see Tiffany Stratton. With a English accent. Oh no. Like they did with Selena Vega. No way. Please. Let's end the cartoon campy comedy shit. And let's get serious. Let's. Let's be like the winners. Of the King of the Ring. Old school style. What they did. I'm tired of that campy shit. And. Let's talk about Cody Rhodes. Because Cody Rhodes right now needs a long-term feud. And Gunta to me makes sense as that long-term feud for the summer. And going into SummerSlam. Because right now, what you're doing with Cody Rhodes is you're having him in one-and-done matches. Because people say, you know, the match with AJ Styles, that was a one-and-done match. But let's put it this way. If Cody Rhodes goes up against different competitors at King and Queen of the Ring, and then you got Clash at the Castle, and then the Money in the Bank, that's going to kill his championship reign. And I understand the narrative. Oh, yeah, Roman Reigns had one-off matches when he was champion. I get that. But here's the thing. And here's the difference between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns had broader stories to tell with the bloodline. Cody Rhodes doesn't have that. 
And like I said, it's going to kill his title reign. If you do that. That's why WWE, they have to recognize that and they have to do something to give Cody Rhodes a long-term feud, especially on the road to SummerSlam. Like I said, him and Guta would be the perfect feud. And it's not going to be The Rock because to all the people out there, oh yeah, Rock's going to come back for SummerSlam. Oh, we're going to have a summer feud between... The Rock and Cody Rhodes. No, 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 no. Because the way that I'm seeing it right now, we don't know when The Rock is going to return to WWE. We just don't know. He's filming his movies right now. But let's talk about the bloodline. There's a lot I want to get into with bloodline. Because... Things are getting spicy for the bloodline, especially with Solo Sequoia running things. And now, what are we seeing with the bloodline? We're turning into a new chapter with the bloodline. We saw Tangaloa debut. They beat the living fuck. Out of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Paul Heyman. Was horrified. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. Now the big question in all of this. Because I saw a lot of this. In the IWC over the weekend. What's going to happen with Jimmy and Jay Uso? How are you going to put those two. Going up against this new bloodline. And remember, we did see the planting of the seeds with J- Jay Uso. When Jay Uso was getting ready for his match versus Damian Priest, the new bloodline approached him. That right there, as I like to say, is the planting of the seeds. But if you do watch SmackDown, I would expect to see Solo Sequoia's um, bloodline dominate SmackDown until Roman Reigns is ready to come back. We don't know when that is going to happen. That's anyone's guess. But Triple H, he's keeping that a secret. He knows what he's doing with this. And that's why as we get into every premium live event after premium live event you're going to see the chapters go in you're going to see a new chapter after king and queen of the ring it's just simple arithmetic and how is this going to lead to paul Heyman? paul Heyman is the wise man paul Heyman doesn't have a roman reigns And you know that he's afraid of Solo Sequoia. And Paul knows that that's not going to sit well with the tribal chief. Or whoever the tribal chief is. Because I'm telling you this right now. Who's running things in this new bloodline? I'm going to keep repeating the narrative. It's the rock. It's the fucking rock. That's running things. And Paul Heyman doesn't have any power. Right now. Look what happened on Smackdown Friday night. He revealed that he was the guy. That pulled Roman Reigns out of the draft. Nick Aldis. Called Paul Heyman out on that. That tells you. That Paul Heyman is scared. Paul Heyman is going under this pressure right now with this new bloodline. And you know what? He should be going under pressure. Because now Solo has the mutiny. And it's going to mean a lot when Roman does come back. 
Could we see Paul Heyman churn babyface? Anything is possible in the WWE. It's like, remember, the old slogan, anything could happen in the WWE. That's what you're seeing right now. And let's talk about Damian Priest. Because what I'm seeing right now, and it's just what I'm expecting. Damian Priest and Finn Balor. We all know the history that they've been going into one another's throats. And it wasn't the first time that we've seen it. We saw that backlash. We know that Rhea Ripley had to be the one that was the peacekeeper. Because she wanted Judgment Day to be united, right? That was then. Now we're in the present. And what are we seeing right now? We're seeing the planting of the seeds. We're seeing the cracks of the Judgment Day breaking up. Rhea Ripley wasn't there to save Judgment Day. Dominic Mysterio, he's not going to be the voice of the Judgment Day. J.D. Madonna, I don't know what the hell. He's going to try to do his best. But Damian Priest has barely trusted the Judgment Day. And right now, we're seeing the splits of it. It's on the cards. And we all know why. Because Damian Priest was upset with J.D. Madonna and Finn Balor with what they did after the match. Not to mention interfering in the match as well. That is going to be something to watch on Monday Night Raw going forward in these next few months. Because you're seeing it right now. You're seeing that slow burn that he's leaving the Judgment Day. It's going to happen. I've been saying it for weeks. You're going to see, and this is not a prediction, this is a spoiler, people. When Rhea Ripley comes back, you're going to see Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley team up to fight Finn Balor, J.D. Madonna, Dominic Mysterio. And Liv Morgan. Because you know Liv Morgan is going to be part of this Judgment Day now. And how is this going to happen? Damian Priest is going to lose the world title. And it's going to happen. There's two ways this is going to happen. Number one. The Judgment Day interferes. And this is going to be when Damian Priest says No. I do not want you guys interfering in my match. And then it backfires when Damian Priest loses the belt. And this could happen at any time. Or number two, Damian Priest says, you know what? Same thing. I don't want you guys helping out. And then what happens? They help Drew McIntyre. When Drew McIntyre can be 100%, and it's going to happen at Clash at the Castle... That's when you're going to see Drew McIntyre get his championship reign back. It, WWE is in a great position right now to do this. Because if you look at it, they're tired of Damian Priest as a champion. And maybe the fact that Damian Priest did steal a little bit of Judgment Day's Thunder. They just want to destroy the guy who's holding the world championship belt. So that's what it, I'm seeing. It's not a coincidence. Judgment Day has been great. Don't get me wrong. I like that fraction. But you know what? The end is near. So, what predictions do you see with WWE after Backlash? Put it in the comment section down below. Until then, it's your Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah. I'm out. Peace!